Well, we're kind of doing what we did with the with the little red granary, um, not allowing the background to be too important. Although in this case, I'm letting a bit of sky in and a bit of water in, um, so it's more of a scene, I suppose. But I'm going to try to keep the scene reasonably muted because it's really going to be about this dory, this little boat. Uh, and it's going to be a red dory <laughs> as well. So I'll just start with carving in the sky a little bit here. Don't want to be too exact, really. I'm using uh, I'm using ultramarine blue and a bit of yellow ochre. And obviously a bit of white. Oh, let's see. That's awfully round looking. And yes, of course, I'm painting in the edge of the the edge of the trees. And doing this. And just a few strokes. It's pretty much done. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Maybe we'll just introduce a bit of the sky into that spot. too detailed. Just one spot where you can see the sky through the, through the bush there. It'll start a little bit darker here where the trees meet the sky. So all the way in. Some of that. And as we approach the boat, the, the prow of the boat, I'll, uh, I want to go a little bit lighter because I, I want to, uh, excuse me, show off. I want, to, I want to carve around it so that you can see clearly what's there, especially on the dark side, the side in the shadow. I may have gone a little bit overboard there. We'll see.
No, I think that'll work. Okay, keep some light going there. And we'll go a little bit greener. I'm using ultramarine blue and yellow ochre and a bit of bird sienna. And in some spots, just yellow ochre and ultramarine blue. Right now, that's what I'm using, actually. Just yellow ochre and ultramarine blue, going quite green. Even there, just, just in that shadowy spot. Now this gunnel, this this top edge of the boat, is going to be very light in color, so I can afford to go a little bit darker with the bush. I'm looking at it though and I'm thinking, eh, I might even be going too dark right now. Yeah, I think I am. So, back to Adding a little more yellow ochre. You know, I want the background muted, but not too muted. It has to stay interesting. You can see I'm not going quite as swirly as I was with the with the cabin. No particular reason for that. And it's just how my hand wants to work right now. <laughs> it may be swirlier in a minute, but for the moment I'm using fairly square strokes. Alright, so the bush is painted in. Um, I would like these two trunks to stand proud of the bush. I've gone a little, just, just, just a hint higher, well maybe not higher, but sort of equivalent to this area in value on these rocks. Um, going to allow these trunks to catch a few, a few hints of light that will be higher value uh, than most of the background because they're beginning to catch some sunlight. Um, rocks are in, water's in, as you can see it's all still quite muted. Um, now that I've carved the back side, the shadow side of, of, the, of the front of the boat in, uh, it becomes quite obvious that um, this light has to be extended further this way. You know, this, this line here has to move to the left. Now, I knew that when I washed it in, but I wanted to give myself as much information before I decided exactly where to lighten it up, where to make that dividing line between uh, light and shade. And, okay, that's to come. I'm not going to worry about that yet. But maybe we'll just put in a few... I'm mixing some raw umber and a little bit of burnt sienna. Because I thought, you know, we'll allow these branches, maybe, to catch some light in places. Okay, I think I can step up the value even more on that. Let's see. and these trunks and I'm just going to throw a little bit of color in there. There I am throwing color again.
I'm being quite careful. I'm being fairly deliberate with where these strokes go. You do not, you don't want to just take, you know, the paint that I'm putting on now and just go the full length of everything to, to fill everything up. It that doesn't work. It it looks it would end up looking very unnatural. And believe me, there are people who are better at this than I am. But uh, that's the general. What I'm doing here is the general idea. Dropping the value, raising the chroma. the trunks painted in. That is the trunks painted in. Now, let's just lay a couple of brighter strokes a bit blobby. I'll have to go in and deblob that. So I will simply take a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little more raw umber and just a hint of paint thinner. say such a thing. We still have this little guy off to the side. He may not be that important, but he certainly serves a purpose. Okay. That's a game combination of raw umber and burnt sienna. serve the painting if he catches a bit of light in that way. And the light trails off as it gets to the bottom. 
so as not to overpower the, the value of the, of the top of the rock there. Yeah, I like that. I like this. You know, it's just kind of an interesting medley of shapes in this small area. You know, it helps to uh, add variety to areas where there are some swirly strokes, some, some square blobby strokes, and, and what have you. Yeah, that's good. Subdued detail. Rough detail. What would you call it? Rustic? Put it this way, I don't want to get more fussy because if I do, it will detract from the boat, which is, as we know, the most important element on the painting. Well, we've painted the scene behind the scene. Next time we come into the sunlight and uh, getting this exactly right always makes me nervous, but it's really rewarding. Um, it goes okay. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for watching, guys.